Today I'm testing wet strength tissue again. Welcome back friends. If you have not been to my channel before, I do a lot of gel printing and collage. Today I'm going to do a little bit of both. My name is Susan Clifton. I'm a South Florida artist. So I haven't said that in a while, so I thought I would slip that in. Anyway, today we're going to start with some gel printing with some of my new stencils, my newest stencils, I should say. And, um, and we're going to just do a little bit of layering and stuff. And we're going to not just test it for transparency, but for, you know, collage. And then I'm going to take some of the papers that I made today and we're going to make a little collage in my Soho journal. So let's get to it. I got a new brayer. I think I'm going to like these because this part pops out and I can soak this to, to clean it with the uh, Murphy's Oil soap and then pop it right back in. That way this doesn't get ruined. Um, I had these brayers and as you could see by soaking it with uh, the metal, the metal's getting all funky and I don't think this one comes apart. If it does, it'd be almost impossible for me to get it back in. But um, and this is also hard, like a, a harder rubber and this is a much softer rubber. So I think I'm going to like these. I also have a speed ball that's metal that doesn't come apart. So I have, I'm going to play with these for a little bit and see how I like them. I think I'm going to like them. So also today I'm going to work with some wet strength tissue. Now I, I already cut it to the size of my plate, kind of. Um, a little bit bigger than the size of my plate. And that way I don't waste so much. This paper I think is expensive. I mean, other people think it's not that expensive, but, and it's a lot of work because you got to cut the paper before you can even use it unless you're using it really large. Um, tell me what you think about that. But anyway, I'm going to try working with it and see how I like it. Um, I did try this one the other day and compared it in collage with the, um, uh, deli paper that I use and and it's about the same in terms of transparency during collage um, but anyway let's um, let's work with this and I'm just going to work with some of my stencils probably gonna I just want to see how the plate if I, if I just do a session and I don't and I just get in the flow and I just work I may be able to enjoy it. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Sometimes things come to me and then I might want to use this paper for a particular technique or something. I'm hoping that that's the kind of day I'm going to have. So I am putting it the shiny, um, smooth side down, I should say, smooth side down. I do like the thinness of this paper and I'm not really sure if I'm going to like collaging with it. What I might do is a quick collage when I'm done this, just, just to see how I like working with the paper itself. And I'm using Nova paints. That's fun. I'm going to layer with that. So let me see. I'll leave it a little bit longer. It's not picking up yet. So it doesn't pick up as quickly as the deli paper does. 
I'm keeping some of that nearby in case I want to pick up any residue. Like, see how it's leaving the outline? I mean, we still have a good ghost. I'm going to see if I can get the deli paper to pick up what's left. Probably not. No, paint's too dry at that point. Okay, um, so we'll just pick this up with the next layer, which I think is going to be quinacridone red. With maybe a touch of Hansa, Hansa yellow. Oops, more, more than a touch. Okay, we're going to mix these up a little bit. So this particular stencil is not on my website yet. It will be soon. I have to get used to the timing on this paper. I think it takes a little bit longer than the deli paper. Actually, that's a lot of fun. And again, I'm going to try to pick up. I got some of it. I'm going to put another transparent color. And now pick it up with this. I thought I would see a lot more of the dots. The paper's not bad though, but I love what it left behind. I definitely want to pick this up with something. I'm going to lay down another color and use some of these masks. I'm going to use the Circle Divide mask set. some texture down first.
So if you're familiar with how I work, I frequently use two different kinds of papers. And I like the deli paper to pick up sometimes um, to leave me with a ghost, for instance. Um, so I'm thinking that this might have been a, an area where I would have used the deli paper. In this case, I'm going to use um, the wet strength tissue both times. Did, we did leave some of that, so I am going to put down some Titan Buff, and I'm going to mix this with a little Hansy Yellow. Look at that. That's a lot of fun. Anyway, I'm going to, I'm using my Yasutomo paper as a brayer off sheet today. So that way, if I like any of the sheets, I will actually want to use them in collage as their own rice paper. That was a lot of fun. Okay. Hopefully I didn't wait too long. Okay, I'm going to leave this about a minute and a half just to see if that's the right amount of time. <clears throat> and this one I'll probably put some paint on the underside. So on this one, I'm just going to put this is the Titan Buff, very, very light coat. I'm going to put it on the underside of this. It might have been too light a coat. <laughs> I hardly see it.
actually I think it might still be tra very transparent I don't know we're gonna test this later I think it might be good okay the nice thing about the wet strength tissue is it does not tear and it's not leaving any it's not going to leave any paper on the plate gorgeous okay I'm gonna pick that up with some circles circles and ovals gorgeous these are over here. I like when the paint doesn't totally mix. But I think we have a beautiful ghost. Didn't pick up all of it. I'm going to pick this up with Indian yellow. leave this one trans transparent so I'm not going to do anything else to this but what I want to do is do something similar to this but on top of another color and it might be this one I think to if we pick up these outlines of the circles and then we print the solid circles on top I think that would be really fantastic this is feeling very wet. I'm gonna leave this for another minute or two. Okay, so it only took about a minute, minute and a half. It does not feel wet anymore, so I'm gonna pull. That even pulled up stuff that I had left on the plate. That might be an edge that I'm going to love, especially since it's going to a transparent on it. Okay, but I want to print again on top of this, so let us. I'm going to do the yellow and the red, the quinacridone red again, like I did before.
I'm going to let it dry another minute. Okay. Is it still running? Oops. Yeah. But now we need something more contrasty over this. And now we still have all of this. So... Let's, let's find a contrasting color. I don't know how this will be with that. It might be fabulous. It might not be fabulous. I want to give it a try. Got a bit of a wrinkle in there. I love the subtlety down here where the yellow was. Fun. All right, I am going to try that color on top of this. I have no idea what it's going to do, but let's. I got to find a stencil that I want to use though. You know, different kinds of circles. This, this is the one that also has some square uh, parts as well. Just let that dry. Still feeling very wet. Yeah, it's kind of fun. A little bit psychedelic. I don't know. Um, I'm not going to do anything more to this. This is. Eh, boring me. <laughs> okay, now this might be fun, but it's not going to go over this, so we're, we're going to abandon those two. But what I might do is pick this up with two different colors, and let's see if I can make a little bit of purple in the middle with these two colors. This is... Um, Cerulean blue and quinacridone red.
leaving just a solid background because I might want to lay something on top of it. It's feeling dry. Hmm. See some of it picked up because I didn't I wasn't careful when I was laying it down. And I very, very light on this side. I still might I want to do let's combine some techniques today let's do the rubber band thing I'm gonna grab some rubber bands okay we're gonna use some white paint got like a nice purple going on <laughs> very light Ooh. Oh, I love that I'm not gonna rear over that okay so we're just gonna lay some rubber bands down And we're going to take this and we're going to go right over it. exactly what I was hoping for. Oh my goodness. All right, so let's see what we've got here. Not very interesting, but let's let it dry and we'll pick it up. We'll maybe put a, uh, another stencil down and pick up. But oh my God, this is so gorgeous. This will probably be my favorite one of all of them. All right, so let's wait. Let's be patient, let this dry. I'm gonna put down quinacridone and red again. I hope it's dry enough. Well, that's a lot of fun, but this is going to be even more fun. Oh, yeah. Okay, so now we're going to pick this up with Indian yellow. I hope.
and I'm using really fast drying paint so if you try to do this um, think of the paint that you're using how fast does it dry so this paint dries almost too fast but still when the paper is attached to it it takes about two minutes I can feel how wet it is. I, I love the thinner papers. If you watched the, pa the video that I did on comparing the, paper, the rice papers, I do like a thin paper. That one rice paper was a little too thin and it kept, you know, ripping and staying on the plate. Uh, this is a combination, well, it's not rice paper, but it's thin like the thinnest rice papers and can handle the wet uh, medium so you know it, it can handle the acrylic paint and it doesn't tear so now I don't know how easy it is to tear it we'll find out when we get to the collage but um, I think after I pull this we're going to switch over to my little Soho book and maybe just work in one spread with this paper and see how we like to collage with it. Okay, I'll be right back. This is taking a long time to dry. All right, it feels dry, except in this one spot. Now let's, let's lift it anyway and see. That is fun. Wow. Unexpected. I love, look at that little, that little area right there. Okay, so another thing I can do. So this was also from the rubber bands. This was the first print where we picked up with the quinacridone red over the stencil. Okay, so this one was what was left on the plate, both the quinacridone red that was left over and the white from the um, rubber bands. Whoa, I mean, that's pieces of this would make a great, you know, composition. I mean, I just, I think I'm gonna use this as, start, as my starting background. So I thought this one was gonna be my favorite. And I still love it. But this one is now a product of this. And I think I'm liking it even more. And I do love the versatility of this stencil. So this is quickly becoming my new favorite. Um, this one has always been a steady favorite for me. Um, but I love that this one is more like little picture frames and um, yeah this one is really getting used a lot and it will be in my shop probably by um, when is, by the end of the month for sure I'm also planning some new stencils so I've been playing a little bit with some designs they're probably going to be masks not stencils but um, we'll see they'll, they'll I'm going to try to get them all up by the end of September. Okay, so let's get, let's get the table ready for collage. Okay, before I start cutting and doing collage, I just want to show you what I was doing with um, one of the brayer sheets. So I cut some circles. Look at how cool that is. And this is just from, you know, let's not waste any paper, right? And also, even, even the cutouts, like if you put the that over something else look at how much fun that is so and now I'm glad that these are they're on rice paper it's still um, thicker rice paper than I'm used to but the circles came out good um, on the other rice paper that I like I cannot cut with, it, with a circle cutter and get a nice clean edge it just does not happen it, the paper's too 
delicate. Anyway, and the same thing with wet strength tissue. I tried to make a circle and you could see what happened. So the circle cutter did not work. This is, let me see, yeah, this is the last one that I did. And um, what I'm thinking I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put this on one side and then I'm going to pick it up again over here and I have this one that will introduce a slightly different pattern but also has, you know, that same stencil in the background. Then I'm going to play with some transparency. I picked this up with deli paper. I want to see how this, how these circles will paste down on, over the other um, and see if I like the transparency. Then, same thing with this. I want to paste a piece of this and see how transparent it goes. So we're going to do some experimenting as well as collage. Okay. So I'm just going to cut from the bottom. And as you can see, this we could still see right through this because we were using transparent colors. And I'm going to cut here. And let's make Let's see. I'm going to use this line. This will be my gutter. So if you don't know what a gutter is, that's where all the stitching happens in your book. This is the gutter. So we're going to work off that gutter and then we'll trim this off. And then this side will go somewhat like that. But first I'm gonna cut a piece to go in here. And I need about, let's say two and three quarters. So I'm looking to see if there's any parts of this I think are more interesting. I think I want to stay away from where the wrinkle is. So let's let's pull from this side. And so let's say that's <coughs> So that's two inches. Kind of about like that. I'm not loving it. Not loving it. What I might like more is this. You know, as a white background. I'm thinking of maybe doing that. The other paper was just too busy. I think this will be a lot of fun. We'll 
I'll still have to do something on top of that. All right, we're gonna start by, oh. We are gonna start by gluing this side down. Again, I think I've mentioned this every time, that edges always dry fast. So corners, you have to reinforce those corners. See, even over here. All right, now we're gonna go down on this side. I will say so far I have to I, I will hold my judgment until after it dries but I don't like the way it's looking or wrinkly but we shall see after it dries I may love it Seems to be curling more than I'm used to as well. All right, we're going to let this dry and then we'll see what it needs. I'm going to trim it up and we'll see what else we can do. Okay, while we're waiting for this to dry, it is, seems does seem to be flattening out. Thank goodness. But I want to cut this out of the deli sheet. This was the deli paper. And I want to see what happens when I try to put it in this area right here. Yeah. Okay, went completely transparent. So now there's another test. I want to see how some of this. Yeah. See how transparent this gets. Okay. More than I thought it would. Okay. I have some ideas, but I want to see after it all dries and I have it trimmed up. I want to see if those ideas are good. So I will be right back. Okay, so I'm, I'm all trimmed up, and it, and it dried flat. I mean, it was really bowed, um, but it dried flat, so I'm pleased with that. I'm still not pleased with the, the wrinkliness of it, but um, <clears throat> so there's one thing that I definitely think I want to do. I want to mirror this, but with paint over here. White paint and a stencil brush. A little heavy so it bled underneath a little bit it was a good idea though so let me show you the proper way of doing this so this is a dry brush technique where this is what you should be using if you're using a stencil and your brush should be very dry unfortunately my brush is still a little bit wet I tried to get all the moisture out of it as I could but I still have a little bit then after you load up your brush, you dab it off on a paper towel and then you use circular motion and you build up your color a little bit at a time. And then you should get really clean lines. I'm also thinking of putting this in here. Now, I don't know if I should do it this way or if I should do it like this way. So I'm thinking that way. Okay, so now I'm gonna have to use heavy gloss medium to put this down over here so when you have something thick like this you really should use the heavy gloss medium 
the, the thinner mediums just will not really work. Okay, so I have to trim that up after it dries and then, um, and then this one's finished. Okay, so I can see why some people would really love wet strength tissue. It definitely holds up to the moisture within the acrylic paint. Other than that, I don't see a reason to use it. I, I like my deli paper and I will eventually find a replacement for Art Advantage rice paper. I'm still testing a bunch of rice papers and um, it's okay. <laughs> it's all I can say about it. It's okay. Uh, but everybody's different. So you may love this. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of you out there that are watching this that are saying, no, Susan, it's wonderful. Yeah, maybe it is for you, but it's, I, I don't see the purpose of it. I prefer rice paper. So, so I'm still on the hunt for a rice paper. I would like some recommendations. I'm, I look, I'm looking for a thin rice paper, but not too thin. And uh, if you know of one that I have not tested yet, please send me, put it in the comments below and um, I will check it out. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to create, inspire and share and I'll see you next time. Take care.